everyone. My name is Solomay Tibabu. I'm the host of the Going Digital Behavioral Health Tech Conference, and I'm so excited to have Karen and Rob here with us today. Uh, welcome, both of you. If you could please start off by introducing yourself and your organizations, uh, starting with Rob, please. Uh, Rob Rebeck, CEO uh, for Front Telecare. Karen Zuger, Chief Strategy Officer for Right at Home. Great, thanks. And Rob, Please tell us what is Forefront Telecare and what makes you unique? Thanks, Salome. Really appreciate it. Um, as you know, Salome, there's a lot of telehealth organizations out there and a lot of behavioral health organizations out there. And thanks to people like you, uh, funding for behavioral health tech in particular is $2 billion so far in 2021, as, as you well know, which is just incredible. So there's a lot out there. And like you, uh, we believe in serving the underserved and we're really excited um, to now see companies and investment support supporting segments of patients for companies. And that's really the main differentiator for us is we serve an underserved segment. Specifically, we serve seniors and the, the geriatric population. The company was founded to meet the behavioral health needs of skilled nursing facility residents. But then we found a huge void in the market when it comes to seniors in hospitals, at home, in outpatient settings. So the evolution of the company has naturally migrated into a full con continuum of care solution for this almost forgotten and, and very underserved uh, segment of our society. It's not that we don't also treat other vulnerable adults. We do. But our point of entry for our healthcare clients is, is always seniors, for, seniors first. Second, we're, we're unique in that we have a state-specific uh, setup for medical practices all across the country so that we can contract with payers and then hire psychiatrists, psychiatric nurse practitioners, and LCSW professionals who assign their billing to us. Our current service put footprint is these 47 states. So in terms of being able to say that we are national, we are, we are just about there. And the third piece would be we offer a full continuum of care model that treats patients in every care setting. Our care model is collaborative in the truest sense in that we acquire patients to treat through other trusted care providers for those patients who, in essence, are aggregated for us for the patient flows and with whom we closely coordinate and integrate our care delivery. Psychiatry, by its very nature, is collaborative, so we've leaned into that business model and integrated approach with our provider partners. Well, that's it's Rob. I just have to jump in and say I, I I get excited listening to you talk because it's just so awesome to see organizations like Forefront Telecare coming into play and coming into the overall ecosystem um, to be able to support exactly that the underserved market of seniors and you know to jump in about right at home we've been around for for 25 years we're a global organization second largest in the world um, and we service seniors as well seniors and those living with a disability but the majority of our clients clients that we serve and care for our seniors. Um, we provide three different levels of care. We've got your companion level care, your personal care, and your skilled care. Um, and those are all delivered through our caregivers, which are, you know, are absolutely the most important part to make this all work. Um, like I said, Right at Home has been around for 25 years. And really what makes us unique, though, is our ability like, similar to Rob, to, to be able to truly collaborate with other providers within the industry and the ecosystem and figure out what we need to provide, what we need to engage, who we need to engage and how we need to engage to ensure that our seniors have the best quality of life possible. And certainly behavioral health, mental wellness is a huge component of that. Um, we engage with all sorts of providers from home health and hospice and um, therapy services, eating, you know, food delivery, transportation. So there's all sorts of different resources and services out there. And from right at home's perspective, we really do view ourselves as the navigator, right? So through that aging journey, your needs change, the dynamics of your living environment changes. There's all sorts of things throughout that journey that change um, your wants, your needs, your desires. Mental health is a big piece of that. And I know we're gonna talk about this a lot as we move through our discussion today, but ensuring that our clients and caregivers have access to strong behavioral health services virtually um, is, is of utmost importance to us and really does ensure complete and whole wellness within the home. Thanks so much. and. As you both know, the senior population and their behavioral health needs, I mean, now more than ever, this is a huge opportunity to really make a difference for this population. So very excited about the work that you're both doing. Um, 
Rob, can you talk a little bit about how your company has evolved over the last several years? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Salome. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, we started out doing uh, rural skilled nursing facility psychiatric services. In, in 2017, we were asked to help out a rural Jerry Psych hospital mm-hmm. unit um, in both the hospital, and we found this to be very rewarding. It was a natural synergy for us to go into this market, and financially, we were able to significantly help these hospitals realize both greater census and greatest mar- greater margins and eliminate their fear of losing the healthcare professional staff that keeps these units alive. This led us to other geriatric units um, and outpatient care for solutions for these hospitals and their affiliated primary care provider groups within the health systems. So our significant growth has really been organic. With COVID, we saw our SNF partners especially hit very hard and reached out to us to see if we could help them take care of patients in their homes. We had a, an at-home business primarily serving the VA, but this was a really interesting opportunity for us to evolve that business and pivot a bit. And this is really what led us to right at home and then to emeticists and other home health and home care providers. Uh, finally, this, this development opened up our latest bridging service where we follow the patients as they transition from one care setting to the next, providing more of a continuum of care solution for our patients and for our clients. It's so nice that you've got a service now too, just a virtual service that can do that because it's flexible, it's agile, right? And we are, when you think about your seniors, you think about the boomer consumer, right? And they are, they want convenience, they want, um, they want things delivered to your home. And that's the big trend, right? Everything is moving to the home. Reimbursement is moving to the home. Care is moving to the home. And with the shortage of behavioral health providers out there, having somebody physically in the home would be really, you'd be hard pressed, particularly in your rural market. So I love the fact that um, Forefront Telecare is delivering this virtual solution that seniors really seem to um, have received to respond to. I think that that's really awesome. So excited for what Forefront is doing. So Karen, if I could ask you, what was really the inflection point that had caused you to focus on a need for a behavioral health program? Gosh. So that's an interesting question because um, I have a a, a long history with behavioral health services, worked with an organization prior to this where we built out a national logistics hotline for patients that needed behavioral health services. And it's it's, it's crazy to think back to the past because we really pushed so hard to try to get some of these behavioral health services delivered through telehealth and we just couldn't get the reimbursement. And um, But we did create a process where we could at least find beds uh, when they were available and when you had providers, of course. <clears throat> So we could at least find beds and it just became a passion of mine because it was just so sad to see how many people out there needed mental health and needed support and couldn't get it because there was just not enough providers to support it. So as far as an inflection point, it's always sort of been there for me and the need and moving into the post-acute world and working with seniors where mental health, isolation, all these things that have sort of been exacerbated during COVID They've always been there for our seniors, right? On average, the closest family member to the seniors that we serve is 250 miles away. So they've always sort of been on an island. So, you know, loneliness, the loneliness epidemic itself has always been there for us, you know, and anxiety and that type of thing has always been there for our seniors. So trying to figure out a solution to help them has always been on my radar. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we partner with a lot of um, large home health providers. One of them is Encompass and Bud Langham, their chief strategy officer and I were chatting one day and just talking about mental health and how we get over this and the unfortunate rise of geriatric suicide, which is just terrible in itself. And he said, oh shoot, I need to introduce you to Forefront Telecare. So that's how I actually got an introduction to Chris over there. And we just started chatting. And again, it's a passion of mine. And then I connected that to me, I was like, gosh, This is our missing link. This is is the component that helps us again with that holistic care and ensures that we truly are focusing on mental health as much as we're focusing on physical health. And again, we're we're a non-skilled organization. So for us, it's not about coming in and assessing and getting physician's orders. But what we can do is engage with our home health partners, you know, and understand sort of the social determinants of what's happening within the home and recognize the the pieces that sort of get missed, right? Is 
Sally really taking her medication or is she feeding it to the house plan? Is, is Sally really getting up and going for walks or is she sitting in her family room with the blinds closed all day? You know, these are things that we know that we can let professionals know about and then we can encourage the engagement with companies like Forefront. So I think it's just sort of been this long kind of um, search for the right partner in the right way. And I think Forefront Telecare really checked all the boxes for us and has provided a solution that is, is accessible, um, easy to sort of integrate into our operational model. And one that we've seen results with, not just with clients, but with caregivers, right? There's a level of <laughs> of almost osmosis, right? Where you've got a caregiver that's facilitating some of these talk therapy sessions and hearing some of the feedback from the professionals at, at forefront and recognizing that sometimes all it does take is to open up the blinds, to get outside and do a little walking. Let's make sure that we're eating and we're staying hydrated and that we're focusing again on all the different components that can affect your mental state. And you know, it's cyclical, right? Or it's, it, it's one affects the other. So you got to get your mental health right so that you're physical health is right. And you got to get your physical health right so that your mental health is right. You can't focus on just one. It, they're all together. So I think the more we push forward and collaborate and work together, the more others will have an inflection point where they see, oh my gosh, this is something that we also need to integrate into our overall care delivery process. That sounds amazing. Of course, how could you offer a perfect seamless experience without addressing the behavioral health component? That's right. It's a huge factor. Um, and Karen, if I could ask a quick follow-up. So in your markets, are behavioral health providers accessible locally for the senior population? Yeah. So that's a tough question. It's, you know, unfortunately, there just is a shortage like we've been talking about across the entire country. And, you know, we're in, there's, we've got 500 locations across the United States and are in the majority of the MSAs. Um, so you're going to have some presence of behavioral health providers, but there's not enough. I mean, let's just be honest. You've you've also got the you know they call it the silver tsunami, right? So you've got this huge wave of, of folks that are turning 65. I think it's like 10,000 folks turn 65 on a daily basis. I mean, it's crazy, and so we have our own sort of problems with just caregivers and being able to support the needs of seniors. And that's a far larger group than behavioral health providers. So um, I think from a, from a physical standpoint, being able to see and sit down and talk to behavioral health, um, that's going to be more and more and, and more less, <laughs> you, know, you know, there's just not enough providers out there to service the needs of our seniors. So again, virtual solutions, integration of technology becomes the next step in so many different care delivery models, but behavioral health in particular is an important one. So Rob, it's exciting to hear about this partnership. And now from your perspective, can you talk a little bit about the patients you serve? Yeah, yeah, Karen, and, and thanks for that. Um, that's incredibly inspiring. Um, you know, sad, of course, that it's 250 miles you know, to a family member, but incredibly inspiring what you are doing. Uh, that, that combination of, of the home care and the home health and, and the technology and the wellness and the pharmacy, and other support services that you have in place and are, and are you know, now working on putting in place is, is really incredible to help these people. So, uh, so kudos to you. Um, it's really, really wonderful, really wonderful what you and the organizations are doing. Um, yeah, and it, it is, you know, the provider piece, it, it is a huge challenge, huge challenge. Um, you know, there is this huge supply and demand gap. Um, and really, um, unfortunately, Tela, um, you know, ends up really being the only way to, to solve, you know, a number of these problems. Fortunately, we have it. Um, but, um, but anyway, I, I mentioned before that we focus on seniors. Uh, within seniors, we focus on the more moderate to severe. Um, and that's, that also, I think, makes us pretty unique, um, focusing on this medium to higher acuity. Um, the, the folks that tend to be in more distress, whether they're in the SNF setting, the hospital setting, or even the home setting. So we're, we tend to be tre treating patients that have um, you know, more, more moderate to severe anxiety, depression, uh, schizophrenic, major mood disorders, bipolar, you know, et cetera. Um, clinically. That's not to say that we aren't treating the um, sort of low, uh, lower acuity. We do, but the, the quote unquote worried well is, is typically not where we're spending our time. We're also, because of the age 
um, and fragility of the patients that we're treating, we're also spending time on neurocognitive disorders. So about, about 40 to 50% of our patients have some form of de dementia and or Alzheimer's. So um, those are the patients that we're most focused on. And again, we're doing them, we're treating them all through tele. Um, and in many care settings, as, as Karen described, it's not a matter of tele or in person. It's, it's the, the choice is tele through a service like ours or no care at all, which is you know, really, really disturbing. Thanks for sharing about the patient population. That's certainly not an easy population to reach. And so clearly this is very important work, but can you talk a little bit about the care settings of, of where you serve these patients? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So we've got, we've got a couple of care settings. As I mentioned, we started off in skilled nursing facilities. They are the most highly regulated and overseen settings and probably in all of healthcare. And this has evolved over the last 40 years in reaction to some, some tough situations that today, the layer of government has eyes on almost every aspect of every patient's daily life. Developing a remotely managed care program and fitting ourselves into these daily lives of these patients and the staff for them is possibly the company's most valuable contribution that we've had over the years. And, and then of course, we've expanded on that. And we're proud to say that our first skilled nursing facility client in upstate New York 10 plus years ago is still, still a client where we see patients today. In hospitals, we provide medical directors and, and psych NP staff to round on patients seven days a week and are on call 24 seven, 365 essentially accept, accepting patients into psychiatric units, establishing care plans while they are treating them and then discharging them as quickly and as safely as possible. As I mentioned earlier, we're now offering post-discharge care to ensure that the patients land safely in their next setting, be it back to a SNF or into a home. And this year we'll have begun, begun offering emergency department psych services to help our hospitals triage patients, who show signs of mental distress to determine what the next setting should be and give some direction to the ED staff and get them in and out of the ED as quickly as possible. In the home setting for seniors, as Karen had alluded to, we work with patient families or professional caregivers to treat their BH needs. And for the adult population, we work directly with them via our telehealth application, whatever smart device they have, wherever they are. So what we're doing with Karen and right at home, as she alluded to, is the screening, the insurance verification, we're billing insurance directly, we're setting up the appointments, the technology support, of course, the visit itself, um, where no PCP referral is required, which can be a, a snag in some situations. And then they are seeing the same provider time after time. Thanks so much. And Karen, you also alluded to this earlier, but can you talk about how behavioral health services are benefiting your care teams and in, in personal care services? Sure, yeah. yeah. Again, it's really, it's sort of interesting because um, our, our caregivers really become part of the family, right? They're an extension. They're there all the time. We always say we're there before other providers get there. A lot of times we're there alongside other providers in the home and we're there well after other providers have left. So they, it, it's a very personal, intimate experience when you bring in a professional caregiver into the home and you're there all the time, in some cases, 24-7. So a lot of our clients, um, you know, as Rob talked about, also have some level of cognitive decline. And, you know, it could be Alzheimer's. We've got a lot of patients with dementia, but you also have things like, um, you know, alcoholism. We deal a lot with the VA too and vets and, um, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder and, and that sort of thing. And, and it's a struggle for the caregivers, right? Those can be very challenging clients. So for our caregivers, this, there, there's really kind of a twofold value. One is they have somebody to help, right? They have a tool. They've got a partner to help work with them that they can sort of vent themselves and say, here's the situation that I'm dealing with, you know, so they can just like with our home health providers where we lift the caregiver up and remind people that they might not be clinical, but they know a lot, you know, and they can help to fill in the gaps and really understand again, holistically, the needs and the challenges of our, and the desires of our client, right? Of our extension, our family member. So I think for the, for the caregiver, it's a tool, right? It's a support service. But then again, the caregiver with technology helps the senior to engage, right? So there's functionally, COVID has been really interesting. Before COVID, you know, I would talk to owners all the time and 
well, our seniors just don't want to adopt technology. They feel like it's big brotherish. They feel like it's, it's just not necessary, you know, and COVID, if there's a silver lining there, really pushed seniors to have to engage, you know, just like, like behavioral health, either you're going to do it or you're not going to have any connection to the outside world at all. So you saw this increase in desire to engage and use technology and people became less scared of it, right? So they, 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 their, their lives were adapted through technology. So that gave us a little bit of an in. So it's no longer, no, I don't want technology. As a matter of fact, some of the results and studies that we've read are there are seniors that wish they had more technology during COVID. You know, we, I didn't have access or they didn't have Wi-Fi set up or they didn't have the bandwidth to support different streaming services or, or whatever the case may be. They weren't properly set up to engage with technology in the way that they wish they could have. So our caregivers serve, can serve in that capacity as well, right? So they can help to ensure that the client is appropriately set up with their technology. They can help work with the local cable companies or whatever the case may be. So when you have clients that have some level of cognitive decline and technology might be a little bit more challenging for them than others, the caregiver can set, set it, or step in to support that and sort of get over that next hurdle of just the setup of the technology, turning on the technology, working with the senior. And also, again, when you're dealing with something like this and dealing with integration of behavioral health support, it becomes a little bit sensitive. So you have to be careful about how you approach it. And again, as that trusted family person, the caregiver helps sort of move the client along to, to help them recognize that this isn't, this isn't a weakness. It's not a sign of weakness for you to need support, right? This is strength that you're reaching out to need support. And I'm holding your hand right there next to you as we turn on the iPad and we start to have dialogue and talk through medications and talk through needs and challenges that you're having. So again, from the caregiver's perspective, it's, it, it is enabling them to be better and enabling them to deeper engage with their client and showcase and, and broaden that depth of trust and support. And then in the meantime, again, they're picking up some tricks around how they can improve their own mental well-being and their own mental health. So we've seen both sort of the, the tides rise as you engage and work collectively together as a team. Wow, it sounds like you have all the ingredients, which of course, trust being such a, a major component. And Rob, on the flip side, from your perspective, are you seeing significant interest in treating seniors at home? Oh, oh, without a doubt, Salome, it's, um, it's enormous. I mean, it's, um, I'm, I've almost never seen as big a trend <laughs> as this trend. It's um, kind of a, a real rush and uh, kind of across the board to, to treat seniors more in place in their home. We're seeing it from providers and payers and home health and home care and technology platforms. Um, you know, we're, we're really seeing it across the board. But I think you know one of the keys for us is working with with people like Karen and people like Right at Home that have both um, the relationships, the scale, the resources, but most importantly the commitment, um, because it's it's sort of it's easy to point to the trends and it's easy to point to the needs, um, but this is hard. You know, it's 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 hard to do. You know, it's hard to figure out. Um, how to how to pull this all together, how to get the right formulation, how to, as Karen alluded to, how to integrate into the, the right, you know, existing workflows. She mentioned, you know, it's it's a tool, but it's it's not just a tool like, you know, here's a screwdriver, go screw in this screw. You know, it's really, really different than that. And it and it takes a lot of give and take with willing partners um, like Karen to to figure it out um, how this is going to work for for the clients. For the for the families, you know how it's going to work work clinically, you know, et cetera. Um, so there is there is definitely a lot of lot of interest, um, and as Karen alluded to, COVID has really accelerated that interest pretty dramatically. Um, but it is it is encouraging. But I think we're still we're still kind of on the tip of the iceberg here. I think over the next several years, we're going to see really really significant growth in in really figuring this out and really really solving these problems for seniors. Totally. Both spaces, I'm sure. Seniors in behavioral health. Um, Rob, can you clarify, are you taking risk? Not quite. 
not not quite yet. We are we are contracting with MA Plan, so that's a fairly recent uh, development for us. But we're not but we're not going at risk yet with the with the plans. We are a fee for service organization. We will very likely move towards some type of value bundle um, type of arrangement with some of these, whether it's MA plans or risk bearing providers or others. Um, but but not quite yet. We want to make sure that we we kind of get it right. We want to make sure that we are providing them and their patients with a, with the highest quality care, but that we're understanding the data. Um, and frankly, um, whether it's an MA plan, home health, um, these various types of, of groups, they they are actually going to have more of the data, you know, typically than we do, more 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 holistically, and we're integrating into that. And so I would say um, stay tuned on that because, you know, my guess is kind of six months to a year that these um, some of these relationships that we've recently developed probably do develop into uh, risk bearing when it's appropriate for us to uh, figure out how and which piece of the pie we share in the risk. And I do think it's just interesting because, I th- again, with COVID, there's been so many additional studies around the impact of mental health on physical health. So I do think you'll start to see that. I mean, everybody is obviously moving to the value-based world. You know, we're seeing more and more and more of that. And of course, you know, right at home, we're a franchised organization for the most part. We do have some company-owned stores, but for the most part, we're a franchised organization. So lots of small businesses that aren't capitalized well enough to, to, to carry risk. But what's interesting and is that I, I think providers within the broader ecosystem have recognized to really improve outcome, to really reduce hospitalization, you have to have that specific recipe of collaboration. You have to have all the different components in place to really see the outcomes that you want to see. Um, so we've sort of been the, the on the sidelines, right? Like we're here for you. If you want to participate in ACOs and you got to have this element of home care, if you have bundles that you're working with, uh, we do a lot of hospital at-home programs as well that need 24-7 support and oversight. I think you'll start to see these different sort of ancillary supplemental Components of care being integrated in the overall value proposition um, in the reimbursement world. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, Karen. Um, and Solome, you've seen this too from Milliman and other studies. When you're introducing high quality behavioral care into that overall mix that Karen described, it's you know, it's it's almost a guarantee that you're going to improve if it's done right, if it's done in a very collaborative model, that you're going to improve the overall quality of care and you're going to bring down costs. Um, but it's, you know, it's it's not, like I said, alluded to earlier, it's not easy to get from here to there. So we're we're, we're yeah. on that we're on that journey for sure. So, Rob, in lieu of everything you just said, what's the impact been uh, that Forefront has had on the patients you're serving? Yeah, thanks, Solme. So we're we're excited. You know, we're really excited about the impact that we're we're having on the lives of seniors as it relates to behavioral health. Um, in terms of measures, we are measuring things like gradual dose reduction of antipsychotics, um, especially in the skilled nursing facilities. But we're measuring that across other care settings, and we're seeing that come down dramatically. We're seeing reduced hospital admissions, um, and we're, we're measuring um, a couple of other key points, but. We also take a look at um, at quality of life. We're, we're actively measuring NPS scores for both um, for both our providers and for the clients where we can measure that for the clients. And we're proud to say that we're in the, the 60s and 70s on those respectively. So our NPS scores are, are really, really high. Um, as far as I know, we are the largest um, organization focused specifically on this niche that we're focused on specifically on serving seniors with behavioral, with tele across these different care settings. Now that's obviously a niche, but it is again, senior behavioral telehealth. We passed a couple months ago, we, we passed 10,000 encounters per month. We'll probably do 20,000 encounters uh, by the end of this year, give or take. Um, so we're really proud of that scale of impact. Again, we're not a DTC model like a Teladoc or one of those companies. So we, we have to partner with hospitals, long-term care, home health and home care. That's, that's our model. We partnered with them to get access to patients and to collaborate on those patients as, as Karen has been describing. Um, and those organizations have real scale. But, um, but the question for, for us, I think for Forefront is, 
and, and the people that hopefully jump into this game with us is how do we go from 20,000 encounters to 50, 100,000, a million encounters because the scale of the problem is just enormous. And so we're, we're happy that we're, you know, every patient matters for sure. You know, every patient is really important, um, but we collectively have to figure out how we go from 20,000 encounters up to into the hundreds of thousands. And so that's, um, that's something that we're actively thinking about. Hey, Rob, and to, just, just as a side, because I just think it's impressive to talk about sort of the breadth of the staff that you guys have, building that out and recruiting and recognizing that there is a huge need for, for professionals that are willing to support folks in their home. And this offers those professionals now the convenience of doing it virtually, which I think is huge. I think about, so my, my husband is a nurse and it's like, how much would he love to have some level of virtual ability to work from the home now and be able to deliver the care in a way that you guys have constructed. So I just think that there's, there's a lot, everybody has a role, you know, everybody has a role in this big sort of ongoing continuum. And I think um, recruiting behavioral health providers and professionals and saying there's this is not just convenient for our clients and not just improving the lives of our clients and the caregivers. Oh, and by the way, the families of these clients who know that their parents are being taken care of, that's also a mental relief. But this is a convenience for also the providers who are exhausted. They're exhausted, particularly after COVID. So this is an opportunity for them to spread their wings as well and to get engaged in a way that's a little bit convenient for them. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Thank you for saying that, Karen. Um, and we do, we do have a whole part of our organization that's specifically dedicated to the recruiting, credentialing, empanelment of healthcare professionals, psychiatrists, psychiatric and nurse practitioners and LCSWs. But I think one of the keys is there certainly, as I mentioned, the $2 billion of, of health tech investment so far this year, there certainly are options for these folks, without a doubt. Um, what we spend, actually, that group spends a decent amount of time doing is being fairly specific about the work that we do, the patients that we serve, the care settings that we serve, and really trying to vet out um, with those healthcare providers, is this the type of work that you want to do? Um, because we're not a very Uber-esque kind of model that some of the larger telehealth companies kind of are. Um, we, we tend to stick our providers on fairly specific and longer duration assignments. And to your point, um, if it's the type of work that they want, if it's a longer term assignment, if the scheduling is predictable, and if they know they're going to get paid, that's, that's really, really good for them. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been so exciting hearing about this partnership. And, you know, Rob, you said this is a, an exciting niche, but just looking at, again, the, the huge need for this population, growing population of seniors, um, it's hard to say it's much of a niche. Um, I have so many more questions I would love to ask, but I can't believe we're already out of time. Uh, thank you so much, Karen and Rob, for taking the time today. Thank you thank so you. much for having us. Yeah, thanks so much, Solomay. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, absolutely.